Hello and welcome back to the channel for another video. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to stabilize a video with Gyroflow, at least show you the way I do it, quick and simple way. It's not too complicated. I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you like the video, please click like. And if you like my channel, please subscribe to it. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. So here I have three things I need to do on the left hand side. Open the video file select the lens profile and open the motion data file. Now I have my motion data files in the same folder as the video file, so it will find it automatically. Okay, I'm gonna click here, open file, and pick a video and open it. There we go. So now you can see it's automatically found the motion data file. It doesn't have a lens profile and it's warning me up here at the top that I don't have the lens profile loaded. I can see that I did this in 1080p at 60 frames. So let me go here. Okay, I put in the run cam. I find this one. That's the profile that I want. I click on that. And now I can check here that this is matching up here with these. And it's going to analyze the video. So it analyzed the video pretty quickly. We just let that fly by there up to 100%. And then once that's analyzed, it's going to automatically pick the sync points. There you go. You can see I have some sync points in here. So I know that the start of the video, I don't really need um, to hear. So I'm going to click the trim tab, trim out that piece of the start of it, then it has a little bit less video to process. So up here, my auto sync is on. I've changed this here to five sync points. It seems to work out well for me. And stabilization field of view is left at one. That's automatic. My smoothness here is 0 0.15. I'll show you how that works now in a second. You can lock the horizon if you want. I don't particularly want to do that, but I'll also show you that. And the zoom speed here is something that I'm also setting to two seconds. So if you want to see how it stabilizes, you can click here on this button to toggleize the stabilization overview. We'll turn that on. Okay, now what it's showing me here is this is going to be the excess video that gets cut out. So what's outside the frame, you're not going to see in the finished stabilized video. Only going to see what's here in the middle. As it stabilizes and moves around, it zooms in and out. That's what your zoom speed is for here. You can turn off the sound here of the video because we don't need that. So let me click play and I'll show you how it works. Okay, here's my video. There's my plane about to take off. And you'll see it zooms in a little bit now because it needs to be able to get rid of the shaking here. So I can change this zoom and you'll see that now. I start to fly and if I go over here to my zoom or to my smoothness, if I change my smoothness here to say 0.5, okay, now what you'll notice is as the video is playing, you see I have now quite a bigger border here to play with. So I'm losing more of the video, but it's making it a little bit smoother. Now, uh, to be honest, I don't want it that smooth for this because I do want to show some of the turning effects of the plane. So I'm going to bring my smoothness back down. Before I do that, I'll show you the zoom speed. So for example, if I set the zoom speed to 10 seconds, you'll see it zooms in and out quite slowly. If I change my zoom speed here to, say, 0.1 of a second, okay, now you see it's zooming in and out very quickly. So for the flying video, I don't want it to zoom in and out that quickly. It's going to um, make the plane look like it's jumping forward and back in the air. So what I prefer to use here for my settings, but you can play with this and change it as to how you like. I'm just going to put in two seconds there. And that gives me a nice kind of a bit of smoothness, but it still keeps my motion going pretty well. Okay, so smoothness, you can see there's a large border there shrinking in and out, but uh, sometimes I'm losing quite a lot of the frame and it's not showing all the movement of the plane. So I changed that to 0 0.15. And now I'm getting a more realistic video. 
but it's still losing a bit on the sides. That's because of the stabilization, but that's fine. I, that's acceptable for me, and the motion is fine like that. So 0 0.15 here, five sync points, and zoom speed of two seconds. That's pretty much all I have changed from the defaults. Now, what you could do, of course, is you could lock the horizon if you wanted to. You see now, if I lock the horizon, my finished video is moving around, but it's the plane is not actually even turning. You see, it's um, well, the plane is turning, but the uh, horizon is not turning. The horizon is staying straight the whole time. That's quite interesting and probably very useful if you're making some drone footage or something else like that. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to turn that off and go back here. These are the settings I like to use. Now all I have to do is basically export my video. It shows me here where it's going to save the file, and it's kind of affix underscore stabilize to the end of it. You could change here in advanced. You can go down to here, and you can change the suffix for the end of the file if you want. Um, there's no need to do that. I have my preview resolution set on full. Everything else is pretty much defaults. You can also change the language here of the interface to whatever you like. So that's it, quick recap. Open file here, pick the lens profile, open your motion data file if it hasn't opened automatically, and then choose your sync points. Five works for me. My smoothness is set to 0 0.15. Field of view, I leave it at one. And then my zoom speed of two. That's basically it. Then I just gonna click on export and it's going to render the video. So you can watch it render till the end, or if you want, you can hide that. And now where the process has gone is into the queue. So down here beside the export button is a render queue button. Can open this and I can see what's rendering. And then I can close that again. So I could leave that in the queue rendering away and work on a second video. I'm not going to do that because I found Analyzing a video and rendering one at the same time puts my CPU up to 100% and then my computer gets a bit slow. So I'm just doing one at a time. You can also change um, in the settings the amount that it uses or, or the amount it'll render at the same time or you can change here the device for video processing. I'm using my NVIDIA card. And that's it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you want to see some of this finished footage, I'll be putting it in one of my next upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.